Hey everybody, this is Sarah Spencer with the Atlanta Journal-Constitution and this is Know Your Dogs, but it's an extra special episode today because we get to show you a day in the life of the dog, aka a Gaten or Q. Let's check it out. Before you see anything else from Q's jam-packed weekend, you've got to watch this little guy waking up and getting ready to start his Saturday. There's no coffee, but there are a few yawns and stretches. Good morning, buddy. So Hi, buddy. Hi, little one. Oh, hey, you just gave me kisses. <laughs> and so how long have y'all had this room, you said? We've had both forever. Forever. But then they decided to make it a suite. And so now, instead right. of having two keys, you got one. Right. We got to follow around Q and the Silers over homecoming weekend, October 14th and 15th, capped by Georgia's 55 to nothing win versus Vanderbilt. Before we show you his tailgating routine and arrival at Sanford Stadium, we thought we'd give you a sneak peek at his starring role in the homecoming parade. While being in a parade might not be an everyday occurrence for Q, as y'all will see, greeting hordes of adoring fans definitely is. I need a picture of Uzzah. Just for those who don't know, can you tell us who you are and what your family does? Uh, I'm Charles Siler. I'm from Savannah, Georgia. I uh, graduated here in 83. My parents were here in 56, had a bulldog. University needed a mascot. My dad took the dog to Florida State game. AJC photographers took a picture of him. Coach Butt saw it the next day, liked it, went to my dad and said, Sonny, we like what you're doing. Can you have him at every game? And that's how it started. We're still taking pictures of him to this day, yeah. clearly. Yeah. Were you eager to take the reins and kind of take over the mantle of... of well, I, it's me and three sisters, mm -hmm. and this is a physical deal. So um, I pretty much knew that I was going to grab the leash, so to speak, one day. And so I've had him about 10 years, and so um, it's an honor to be able to carry on the trad tradition that my parents started. Tell me your, walk me through just your routine. I know you guys drive up from Savannah Friday night usually. Homecoming parade's a little unique, yeah. but, but well, on a normal weekend. Well, it's hard, it, there's really no routine. And that, that's because, as you know, um, TV dictates when the game's gonna be. Sure. So if we plan for a 12 o'clock game, it may not be a 12 o'clock game. It could be an 8.30 game. So what we do week of is uh, uh, Claude Felton, uh, sports information guy calls me around Tuesday and says, Charles, th these people need you, these people need you, these people need you. <laughs> and we say, yay or nay, or we can do it. They got to do this, this kind of thing. And so um, you kind of got to do it on the fly. But by and large, uh, we've been staying at the Continuing Ed Center since it was built, I think in like 62. So that is one piece that doesn't change. Um, and other than that, we know the game starts at a certain time. We're going to be there two hours before and that's really all we can set prior to the season. What's your experience like and the experience like for your family coming to Athens on Saturdays? I mean, it, it seems like everywhere you guys go, you're gonna get swarmed and everybody's taking pictures, but you know, everybody loves Aga. We, we're just kind of used to it. Um, we know that uh, if, if he, and he's kind of a bashful dude, he <laughs> likes to be by himself when, when he handles his, his deal. So we look for a place where there's nobody, but you just never know when somebody's gonna pop up. Um, typically, we feed him at 6 in the morning, so he walks at 5.30, but it's incredible how many people will already have their tailgate staked out, yeah. and I could be walking the dog, and it's dark as hell, and all of a sudden, I run up on somebody who's been in a seat with a sleeping bag over him all night sleeping. Well, if the dog sees him, it's no go, and so we have to move on somewhere else. You know, that's sort of a challenge, but I guess everybody has that challenge that owns a dog. How special is it for you guys to be able to play this role, or at this point, is it just kind of normal for you? For you, for you, it's your day to day. Yeah, I, I've done, uh, I was born in 1960. We, Daddy started the dog in '56, so I've been doing it all my life. And um, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't know what to do if I wasn't here. Um, I'd probably be a better golfer. <laughs> That's want a picture, kind of line up and get one, get it and go, get it and go, because you've got to go in a little while. It's like, 
They move this thing like an assembly line. It is a well-oiled machine. <laughs> Once in a lifetime experience. <laughs> Uga's number one. If you've never gotten a picture with Uga, you should see how patient and nice the Silers are. Because <laughs> it's a lot. And they let everybody take their group picture, one-on-one. -on -one. Sometimes they take the picture for people. Y'all good? Yeah. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay. So Charles told me that Q actually weighs 62 pounds. So every time you see him lift Q in and out of that Suburban, it takes a little bit of muscle actually. <laughs> All right, y'all can come up and get pictures. Just can't pet, but you can get right beside him. Does it take a lot of does it take a lot of patience at all when you have so much? Everywhere you go, you kind of get swarmed. No, well, I mean, you saw when we left the Georgia Center, we thought we were done, and then here comes somebody, and we open back up, and then we thought we were done, and, and then here somebody comes somebody else. Comes. That happens all the time, so it's just it happens. So what I try to do is figure that in. Uh huh. So. It so everywhere you go, you're like, okay, we're leaving. We're gonna stay. We're leaving 30 minutes before we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And usually we give ourselves enough time at the ball game to where if we have to fudge, yep. then we do it at the game. Yep. The the visitors get to the stadium two hours prior, and as long as we get in there after them and can get in our spots, then we're good. Yep. The problem is if we wait till inside of the two hours. I don't know if my parking spot will be available. That's the classic it, Georgia campus. It, Even Uga doesn't yeah. know if their parking spot's going to be there. And it's usually an away person that parks in the spot because it's open. Yeah. And they say, oh, this is a nice spot. Yeah. Where's this person? Yeah, well, yeah. he's up here doing pictures. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Part of it. No big so deal. pretty much everywhere you go, you just can't be in a big rush. It's kind of the thing. No rush. Yeah. So how do you go about booking Uga and Q for a tailgate? Um, so we were lucky enough a few years ago to have Mr. Seiler's name recommended to us by an associate of his at the vet school. And then he's shown up with Uga probably our fourth year. And I can't tell you how much our, um, our guests and visitors love having the chance to get their photo taken and go see Uga up close. It's so special. I mean, we know how lucky we are and so, so lucky the family does that for us. the best part of what you do and what's the most challenging part? Uh, challenging part is the driving miles. We, we live in Savannah so that's four hours from Athens. Uh, as far as um, the football part, I guess you could say I've got the best seat in the house. Yeah, you do. <laughs> across the field and then it's time for, you guessed it, more pictures. No autographs, but lots of pictures. One of the hardest things is that everybody wants to pet him because he's adorable, but he's actually still under COVID protocol, so you can't really go up to him the way you would want to, but you still get take a picture. <laughs> Q's crate can get down to 62 degrees when the door is closed, and if the door is open, it's about 68. If you're close enough, you'll realize that if he gets cold, he moves forward a little bit, and if he's hot, he moves back toward his air conditioner. If it's cool enough, Q usually takes a lap at halftime, but if it's a little too warm, he just briefly stretches his legs. I know it can be chaos over here. Tell me what it is like managing that. It's controlled chaos. Yeah. Everybody wants a picture with them. Yeah. And, and that's great. We try to accommodate everybody. And you just have to, you know, just say, okay, hold up, hold up. Just 
one at a time. Yeah. And they, you know, everybody loves that guy. You can why understand not? why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? He's the sweetest thing. I saw you gave hugs to the side. Like, did oh, you get yeah. to know them really yeah. well? Yes, yes, yes. Since I've been doing it so long, yeah. I feel like I'm part of their family or they're part of my family. Correct. What's your favorite part of your job? Really, the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, it's so much fun. Not much to not like. No, yeah. it's so much fun. Yeah. And they're such a, a dream to work with. And, you know, every Ugga that I've been with has been a dream to work with. So it's just, it's exciting. So, as you guys can see, the student section is actually right behind where Hugh's little house is. But it's foam insulated. And sometimes they'll shut that front door. And also, his little air conditioning thing gives him some white noise. So it's not as loud for him as you might think. It turns out it's actually a lot of work being George's mascot, so much so that for three days after a game, Q will be a pretty sleepy boy. But now he gets to relax and snooze on the drive back to Savannah. Let's hear it for Uga 10. <laughs>